TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, don't forget we are partnered with the Blueprint Mastermind, man. We did have the roundtable sit-down talk. Uh, this is up, so you can come take a look at it on their page. The link is down in the description, man. And I've seen this come past my channel, man. Increasing numbers of people in the United Kingdom go hungry because of price spikes. Um, like, so basically what this is, sounds like, like food inflation, like food is getting at a ridiculous price. Um, I ain't never told y'all when I went to, like, okay, okay. I went to Publix. That's the grocery store in Florida. I went to Publix. Eggs were $8. $8. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And the first thing that came to my mind was, man, how are people that can't afford food eating? So I guess it's the same thing going on in uh, the United Kingdom, man. I, what is the the real source of the issue? Is my question. Like, why? Like, this ain't gas. There's no fighting going on and. In the Middle East, that's cutting off, you know what I'm saying, routes for, like, what's going on, bro? All right, A winter here. of discontent is coming for the United Kingdom. Today, the first in what will be weeks of nationwide strikes began across multiple professions, from ambulance crews to border officers, all in protest of skyrocketing living costs. And as the days get cold... Oh, y'all, living costs is too is going up. Many are faced with a terrible choice, heat the home or feed the family. From Whitehawk, one of the poorest districts of Brighton on the south coast, special correspondent Malcolm Brabant. That's a, listen bro, that is a crazy, like, <laughs> a, like I get it, like sometimes it's like, okay, either I'm gonna, am I going to eat or I'm going to pay my bill. Am I, eat, am I going to eat or I'm going to pay my uh, electricity. But heat your home or eat? Freeze or die of hunger is crazy. Not literally die, but like, I mean, maybe, I don't know. But that's tough. All right. Reports. Sue Meachin is cooking up 300 hearty meals. Her kitchen is in the vanguard of the fight against hunger in this social housing complex and beyond, as millions of Britons are forced to cut back on life's essentials, food and warmth. 100% it's cooked with love and it's made for these people that really, really are what I call the forgotten people. People don't care about them, but we do. And that's the main thing. You taste it, mother. <laughs> Hi, grandma. <laughs> we do. And that's the main thing. Okay, what is, some, what is this, y'all? Because it looked good and it don't look good at the same time. It got mushroom, carrots, it looked like beef. I'd eat it. Huh? Taste it, mother. <laughs> <Hi>, grandma. <laughs> Janet Cronin's non-profit provides home deliveries because the local authority okay. can no longer afford to run the service. <laughs> What's your assessment of how bad the cost of living crisis is? Pretty bad. It's dire. There's just so many things. You can't even have your heating on. You've got to be careful. Do I eat? Do I put the heating on? And I'm the same. Like I haven't got my heating on that much. Food price rises have been the sharpest they've been for more than 40 years. And this element of inflation hits the poorest hardest because, proportionately, they spend more of their income on food than the better off. Yeah. Single mother Natasha Bell is heading for a handout. Once a music business executive, she fell on hard times and into the red. A non-profit... A music business executive? If she was at the top of her game in the music industry, like that's a crazy fall from glory. Like not 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 saying that it won't happen to any and with this economy, with COVID, like it's bound to happen to people. But that's why. Okay. Christians Against Poverty helped to get debt collectors off her back. Despite working part-time, Bell is reliant on food banks and the advice of debt coach Neil Avard. 
Because you've got two kids, is that right? Two. two one's kids. 11 and one's 14. Yeah, yeah. How do you see things like you know, Christmas coming up? To be fair, I'm dreading it. How desperate would you say the situation is? I can't even imagine how some of these people survive a week. I ain't gonna lie, man. Christmas was real hard for me. Y'all think, y'all look at this sometimes and be like, oh man, he's doing this, he's doing straight. Nah, Christmas was tough. You know who got a gift? You know who got gifts? My daughter, that was it. The week. We could always blame the economic situation. We can blame the war in Europe. Uh, they're not gonna go away anytime soon. I've just popped in to get a couple yeah. of bits, if that's all right. Of course it is, I mean... Just yeah. the basics. Natasha Bell isn't alone. A recent survey showed that if most working Britons lost their jobs, they would survive financially for only 19 days. Demand for food banks, they would survive financially for only 19 days. Not even a full month? Like, what? Demand for food banks is up 40% this year, and many are struggling because donations are down. What does it feel like, sort of, going to a food bank? Embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Uh, when I first started going, I'd be in a queue and kind of, like, looking at the floor because I didn't really want anyone to see me. And then I realised that quite a lot of people I know have started using the food bank. It's not quite so embarrassing, and I don't, I don't care anymore that people know I go to a food bank. What sort of difference does it make to you? Really big difference. Like, your real kind of staples, like, you know, pasta, washing powder, washing up liquid, bleach, shower gel. They shouldn't really be luxuries, but they are... That's the sort of kind of, like, basic they stuff are. that they give me. It's not like they're giving away lobster or foie gras. It isn't just the poor who are drowning. Those in the middle-income bracket are running faster to stand still or even go backwards. Britain's recent financial turbulence pushed mortgage interest rates to their highest level in 14 years. Does anybody know why this is going on? Or is it, you know, is this the, the, the uh, are we all just going to go into a recession around the world again? You know what I'm saying? Is this, this like, I need specifics, right? Now. I think a lot of families are genuinely terrified. If they're looking at increases of, you know, over $1,000 per month, UK equivalent, then I think they just can't find that money and they don't know where they're going to find it from. Sam Murphy's consultancy is called Mortgage Medics, but in this climate, there's no available cure. The typical mortgage payment might be about $2,500 per month, and a lot of people, when they're coming to the end of their deals at the moment, they're looking at their payments going up by 40, 50, 60%. You know what's crazy, bro? Like, the cost of living is going up, cost of gas is going up, cost of cost of food is going up even some clothing is going up just to you know what i'm saying all of these prices are going up but you know what's staying the same my hourly wage at work and then like all of this is going up but i'm getting paid the same how is that even a, how how do they expect people to live the economy is going to go like it's going it's going to crash right this is just me, like, this is an educational video for real. Like, when I was younger, I wouldn't even be concerned about stuff like this. But now it's like, bro, hold on now. Hold on. Why are eggs $8? <laughs> What's happening right now? Some even as much as doubling. As he tried to balance Britain's books, Treasury Chief Jeremy Hunt targeted middle-income and wealthier households with the highest taxes since World War II, fully aware that his budget would send living standards plunging to record lows. There is a global energy crisis, a global inflation crisis and a global economic crisis. But the British people are tough, inventive and resourceful. Some of the 60 so basically get it how you live is that what you 7 billion dollar hole in Britain's finances was cr who is this lady created by the fiscal mismanagement of conservative premier Liz Truss <laughs> hey they blame it smooth on Liz Truss that's crazy but this is worldwide though so I, I don't know if it's all on her like where I'm living right now like a few months ago this was Fourteen hundred dollars, one four zero zero. Now it's two zero zero zero, and eggs are eight dollars. I'm never going to get over it. Kicked out after just six weeks, the cost of government borrowing and imports shot up. But there's another significant reason why there's a shortfall: Britain's decision to leave the European Union, its biggest mm. trading partner. Independent mm. empirical work suggests that as a result of Brexit, UK GDP is Michael. of the order of 3 to 5% lower than it would have been otherwise. Professor Michael Gaziorek is director of the UK Trade Policy Observatory. Economically, we are taking a hit, 
and there's no doubt that we are taking a hit, but there are political reasons for wanting to make that decision, which is to do with sovereignty. So it becomes a trade-off. Recent suggestions that Britain sovereignty. might seek a closer relationship with Europe have been dismissed by Rishi Sunak, the country's third prime minister, in the in past one six year. months. <laughs> I believe in Brexit, and I know that Brexit can deliver, and is already delivering, enormous benefits and opportunities for the country. Yeah, but you know how these tests, that these, these, these little things that y'all want to do, like, they really affect the working class is who they affect. They don't affect the big business, the big, the big money, the 1%. Nobody's suffering at the top <laughs> with these little experiments y'all do. I think Britain's very broken. I think it's a banana republic. There's, it's not all about business. And bus it's not this trickle down. It doesn't trickle to anywhere. It trickles into the yacht or holiday or a speedboat, so I don't know. It's not trickling down to, you know, us having, like, a fantastic kitchen. To serve people like former bodybuilder and window cleaner Dave Blythe, whose leg was amputated four years ago because of a blocked artery. The meals he receives keep him from joining more than a million British seniors said to be wasting away because of hunger. It is fairly depressing where I've worked all my life to actually rely on people to give you food it doesn't make you feel too good. The Kitchen's co-founder, Brian Coyle, has launched a nationwide campaign to compel local authorities to fund meal deliveries to the vulnerable. So we've given two pallets. There you go, there you go. We've now got a situation in England where over a million, uh, over 60... It's not all heroes wear capes, man. Y'all out there doing the work of angels right now, man. The people that really need it. And I'm sure there's somebody over on Benefit Street taking advantage of this, getting 97 grocery deliveries in one month. But, you know, that is, it is what it is. 55 year olds in this country are suffering from no nutrition. It's quite a shocking statistic in a country as rich as the United Kingdom. Hi, Dave. Here's your dinner. Here's your dinner, Dave. We've got beautiful, we have got beautiful raspberries, Dave. Lovely. Thanks very much. So they deliver day, wait, this is daily? They deliver every meal? Yeah. Charles Sadler is collecting a food parcel for himself and six neighbours. I've been getting food for here for quite a while. What would happen to you if you didn't get this meal? I mean, what sort of difference does it make to you? Well, it stops you from going hungry. But I'm blessed, OK? Across town, debt coach Neil Avard is delivering a welfare package to someone who's housebound. He believes many people have cut back oh, right to the bone. You can budget and get your, your expenditure right down, but I'm now coming to a point where I'm finding... Debt coach delivering food to people that can't... That almost seemed like a, a business move that he just... <sighs> Actually, no, you're, you're, you're in negative expenditure. You've cut down in or cut back on everything. Um, and that, that's going to be a big problem unless the government steps in with more help for people, you know, with heating grants and food grants and things like that. In the words of Britain's Institute for Fiscal Studies, the country is in for a long, hard, unpleasant journey made more arduous by a series of economic blunders. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Brighton. That's tough, man. Do what y'all gotta do, man, and stay fed and stay warm, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.